Good afternoon. Welcome to the Inspiring Inking Facebook page. I'm Amanda Fowler. Today is Tuesday the 29th of June. If you are here, could you let me know? Let me check on my iPad that I'm actually live where I should be because at the weekend I went live in the wrong place. So <laughs> you might have seen me if, <laughs> if you were um, on Facebook on Saturday. I popped up on my personal page and I was actually running a team training. I don't know what happened. It all went a bit crazy. Hello, Lucianne and Michelle and Jen. Lovely, lovely to, to see you guys again. Um, we're here on Facebook. Last week we were on YouTube. Um, I would very much like to know, those of you that were with me on YouTube last week and are here today, um, which you prefer, I have had quite a few emails and it's it's making interesting reading. So do put in your thoughts in the comments. Let's see who else is here. Sue's here, Lorraine's here as well. So how are we? How's the weather? Pretty chilly here today. Well, I say chilly, it, it's not really cold. It's just a bit damp and muggy. Um, a bit rainy. So Sue's here, Chris and Angela are here, Anne's here, Jackie's here, Maureen's here. Yay! Margaret's here. Oh, everybody's in the house today. That is really good. Okay. Let me just, I'm just checking on my stream metrics just to make sure that everything is running okay right it seems to be so i've got my tea i've got a few things to talk to you about today um a few updates um but first of all what did you get up to at the weekend what did you do at the weekend did you have some time off did you get any gardening done any visitors any baking i'm in the need to do some baking so that would be that would be good um so let me know if you've been doing any baking or if you've been doing any crafting what have you been making that would be really good to know so marion's here and perth has been locked down again sorry to hear that marion stay safe val's here warmer and drier in Yorkshire today the grass is growing well again yeah Brian <laughs> Brian looked out the window this morning and went I only cut the grass on Sunday and it's like sprouted an inch <laughs> it's all the warm and the rain that we've had hi Janet so Janet's saying she probably prefers Facebook edition, although the sound on YouTube was great. Hello, Rosie. <gasps> Jackie's husband, Glenn, made scones. Delicious. Did you have jam and cream on them or just butter? Jackie, we'll live through your experience of the scones. Good afternoon, Mum, Pauline. Hello, Stella. Texas is in the house. What's the weather like in Texas, Stella? Hello, Julie, how are you? And Jan's here. And Sue's saying her grass has gone berserk as well. Yeah, it's, it's just weird. I mean, although the grass is growing, it's also the brown patches are really, really getting worse. I don't know, I don't honestly, I think, we have about three weeks in September where when our grass looks really nice, when it's sort of green and and smart, and then the rest of the year, yeah, it just looks rubbish <laughs> because it's dying all the time. Oh, just butter, says Jackie on the scones, but they were delicious. 
Nan is making a digger cake and a matching card for her grandson's birthday at the weekend. Awesome. I hope he loves it. Brian's, the diggers that I put on Brian's cake are actually on the shelf in his office now. So they were obviously a hit. Good morning, Deborah from Calgary. It's a heat wave. Yeah, I saw that. Crazy temperatures. Stella's saying they're a bit wet in Texas. Lucianne is trying her hand at diamond art. I love diamond art, Lucianne. I got some for Christmas. I got mum and Kim some as well. It's just really relaxing because you just sit there and you just dot. So maybe I need to get that out again and, and take a bit of downtime for that. <gasps> Sue made a chocolate cake as a birthday cake and topped it with fresh raspberries. Yum. Um, Val went to a farm shop on Saturday. Sunday just relaxed. And craft, she made the three bags that I showed last week. Julie's been weeding the flower beds. It's all very already very tropical in Ohio. Goodness me. And it's a fairly early morning for you guys, isn't it? Um, so what have I got to say? What did we get up to? So I was working on Saturday, so I was running a team training, and <laughs> It's a full on busy old day. So um, I was at my desk at eight. We went live at 10. And although the live portions were finished by 4.30, I was still working till that 6.30. So Saturday was a pretty long day um, because I needed to send out the video links and replays and all that kind of stuff. That's why I carried on working. So Sunday was a really, really chilled out day for us. We went looking at cars. That was a bit exciting. Um, so my car is getting to the point where it's going to be very expensive. It's got like lots of, you know, like the big services and bits need replacing. I don't know exactly what bit. Brian knows what's bits, but I don't know. But it's going to get expensive to start doing the things that needs to be done. So basically, we need to change it. And we've been talking. And I've always had the big car. So Brian and I always, we have a car each. And I've always had the big car because, obviously, I was the one driving the kids around when they were small. And there's no kids to drive around anymore, obviously, because one lives in Sheffield and one lives in Manchester. And they have cars of their own, so it's not like they need me to drive them around places. Um, and when we need a bigger, so long as we've got a bigger car between the two of us, doesn't necessarily need to mean to be my car. So Brian's going to have the big car and I'm going to get a little car. And I'm very excited. So we went out sitting in little cars to see what I liked. So it's been very interesting. It's very interesting. Cars I thought I liked, I don't like. And yeah. So I will keep you posted. But if you've got any favourite small cars, let me know. Um, but yeah, it's very exciting. So we did that. And that was pretty much it. We got a bit of gardening done. Not much. The um, the garden's looking amazing. I must take some pictures, actually, because obviously everything's just growing like crazy. We've got low. Well, I was about to say we've got loads of strawberries. That's a lie. We are growing a lot of strawberries, but the birds are all eating the strawberries because they're in one of the um, triangular beds, which is quite low. So as soon as the strawberries are ripe, the blackberry, the blackberries, the blackbirds and the pigeons are helping themselves. So that is not very helpful. Um, the gooseberries are so sour. 
this time last year they were sweet they tasted like honey they are oh set your teeth on edge so they're no good at the moment the lettuce got completely decimated by the storms and rain that we had so we've had to replant all of that so you know we're not actually doing that well in edibles from the garden apart from cucumbers the cucumber plants in the greenhouse are doing really well so yeah we will see i'm sure the the plants will all you know rally but i think we are just growing strawberries for the birds so let's have a look rosie's made four cards today apparently sheridan says it's a nice day in south wales she enjoyed facebook but no she enjoyed youtube but prefers facebook Ooh, picked red currants and made red currant jam and red currant and mint jelly delicious sue's been harvesting radishes carrots and peas and so much rhubarb yes yeah, so we've had quite a lot of rhubarb the radishes didn't grow at all they just went to seed there's too many stones in our garden to grow carrots they're just crazy um we have monge too um in the garden so we we have been having a few of those as well so that's not too bad but yeah so there we go so um what else have i got to tell you tonight is craft along so tonight is june craft along it's in the inspiring ink in crafting corner it's a which is a group in facebook if you um haven't joined that group please do anybody from anywhere around the world can join in it's a group where basically we talk about crafting of all types doesn't matter what it is if you've made it we want to see it um there are a couple of questions for you to answer to gain access to the group basically that means that i can stop all the robots trying to get in um or the spam bots i suppose they are and um so make sure you answer those questions we are live uk time at seven o'clock now i am aware that there is a very important football game going on this evening and it starts at five o'clock and for those of you that may not be in the uk england are playing germany and it's in the knockout part of the Euros. So whoever wins is going through to the next stage. So some people will be wanting to watch it and some people won't, but I'll be watching it because it's England playing and I tend to watch all of the national matches. But <laughs> I will be live at seven o'clock, regardless of what is happening with the football. So if it's a standard game and somebody wins then it'll all be done and dusted by seven o'clock if there's extra time or penalties or any of those things it'll go on beyond seven but i'm going live at seven because that's what i said i would do and that's what i'm going to do Ooh. Deborah has found out that she can pause me on Facebook because she let the dog out. So that was one of the things that lots of people said about YouTube that it was really cool that they could pause me. Okay, Leslie is here and she's from Perth as well. I hope you're staying safe there. Good afternoon, Deborah. Good afternoon, Lynn. Um Deborah's saying that she prefers crafting over football and now there's tennis on so that's the other thing there's tennis on because it's Wimbledon fortnight so there's sport everywhere you can't get anywhere without watching sport so anyway craft along will happen at seven o'clock the other things that you need to know is you've only got today and tomorrow to book a place on July's craft along and um, you place an order of 40 pounds or 45 euros in my online store there's a host code which is on my blog 
which is www.inspiringinking.com and in order to um, get your free class just make sure you put the host code in and then reply to me when I send you your thank you email and say craft along please um, or you can book um, 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 you can book a, a kit so you can order a kit so again if you go to Inspiring Inking website then you will find the links there also the last couple of days for the retired list and the discounted items so things from the mini catalogue that haven't made it into the big catalogue will all disappear um, on Wednesday evening so make sure that if you've got any favorites that you want to get hold of that you place your order and then on Thursday it's very exciting because demonstrators can actually place orders for the new autumn winter catalogue or July to December catalogue, which is very exciting. And you're going to need to save up lots of pennies because there's a way too much stuff in there that is super cute and amazing. So, and as well as that, we've got celebration coming as well. So for those of you that don't know, celebration is a way of making a purchase and getting free products. And that's going to be running in August and September. So you'll start to see sneak peeks from me in a couple of weeks time. And that's when I'll be sending out the catalogs as well. So um, that'll be mid towards the end of July and then the catalogues will go live for customers in August. Um, there's going to be a joining offer as well, which is um, a bundle of your choice as well as the standard kit. So that's exciting. Again, that will start in August. And then for July, just because, you know, we can, we've got a paper sale as well. So there's 15% off lots of patterned papers in July. So the email about that will come out on Thursday when it's actually gone live. Um, so that will be, that'll be good. Okay, so let's have a look. Val says she's got, over 30 items on her wish list for the July to December catalogue. Only 30, Val? <laughs> I'm not going to show you my list. It's immense. <laughs> it is crazy. Um, we do keep saying, actually, that we need a button that says buy all catalogue items. Because that might be easier <laughs> just to do that. So I am a little bit excited. I am a little bit excited and um, I'm working on classes. So I know quite a lot of you have been asking for um, bigger classes and classes on Zoom. So, um, so watch this space is all I'm going to say about that. So that's good. Hello, Donna. She's hoping everyone's well. She's in Oz. Joanne, yes, you are in the right place. Yes, indeed. Okay, so today I thought I would just do a little bit of stamping and colouring in. Um, because I haven't done that for ages. And I wanted to remind you of some stamps that um, are in the catalogue that we used quite a lot earlier on this year but um i haven't i haven't used them for a little while so i thought i would use those and um i've got a few cards to show you and one of the cards is the reason why i'm using the stamps i'm using does that make sense um joanne's asking what about youtube so no decision's been made yet joanne i am I am awaiting more data. So I've been asking everybody who prefers what and whether or not um, 
whether or not people prefer one over the other. Now there is a possibility that I can do both at the same time. That will involve more technology and we all know what happens when you start adding in more technology. So I haven't yet decided, but at the moment I'm staying here for now, um, unless I tell you any different. So there we go. Right. Yes, lots of lots of hearts and things. So yes, right. So let me show you these cards. Um, this card is from one of my team, Jenny, um, which is really lovely. She's done some, where is it here? Some masking and then some blending. This one was from Mandy, which is really lovely. Favourite colour. <laughs> and this is this is all heat embossed here. And then this bit here is dry embossed and beautiful frame. That's really pretty. And then this is the card that um, inspired me to get these stamps and dies out. Let me just lift up these butterflies a little bit so you can see. Sorry, did I say that one was from Mandy? Thank you very much. And then this one is from Lynn. And it's got these beautiful butterflies. So these are the die cut butterflies from B Butterfly Brilliance and I'm actually not going to use these lacy bits of dies, I'm going to use the solid pieces but I just wanted to show you that. So yeah, so this is from Lynn R. It is really lovely. Okay, so... Ooh. Let me just find the right page in the catalogue and then I will turn the camera around and we will do a little bit of crafting. Okay, I'm moving my tea out of the way. Right, so let's cover you over and turn you around. I'm the same, very talented people. I know they are. Very lucky girl to get all of these amazing. Amazing things, right? Um I've got something really weird going on with my camera at the moment. It just doesn't seem to be sitting straight and I don't know what it is. It's just odd. Right, okay, let's move that out of the way. Right, so this here is the stamp that I am using today. So it's Butterfly Brilliance. It's a background stamp and it's 16 pounds. But there is a die set that goes with it. And I'm just going to show you both of them. Now, we did, I did show you them quite a lot earlier on in the year. So that's the stamp. Um, but like I said, they haven't had any ink for a while. And I thought that they needed, they needed inking up again. So the brilliant thing about this die is obviously this die, this stamp, is you can stamp a whole background all at once. If you wanted to, you can obviously cut these butterflies into individual pieces. But I love the fact that you can stamp them all and die cut them all at once. So that's exactly what I've done here. Let me turn that around so that will be like that. So I basically stamped it and a die cut it 
And then I've got all of these die cut butterflies all ready. So they're stamped and die cut ready for a project later. So as well as the big die, you've got lots of lots of other ooh, pieces. So you've got ooh, these three which cut little shapes out. So you've got like hatching and like brick and dots. You've then got these two, which are just little kind of infill butterflies. And then you've got these six. And these are all the die cut butterflies. I'll just do with that card. Oh, there we go. So it's this is what they cut out, which is really cool. But they also mean because they're the same size as these, they will obviously lay on the top like that. Okay, so um, lots of possibilities. Um, the dies themselves are a great standalone. The stamps are a great standalone. If you like to fussy cut, you can fussy cut them easy. So just be careful not to cut their antennas off, so otherwise they won't be able to fly. I don't know what their antennas do, actually, but it worries me. Butterflies need to have their antenna. Okay, so what I thought I would do to begin with is get my blending brushes out. So I have got Fresh Freesia, Gorgeous Grape, and Melon Mambo. I've got some Memento ink, <coughs> excuse me, and so it's gorgeous great card blank and a Melon Mambo layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp just down the side of this card. So I'm just going to do a little bit of colouring, sponging, blending um, along one edge. So. I'm just using the Memento Black. The reason that I've got this out actually is because I'm gonna be using some blends later. So, I am just, what I want to do is I want all of the little, ooh, ooh, ooh yeah, all of the little butterfly and part of the other two. Now, I'm actually going to stand up just to give this a really good press. It is a big stamp. There we go. And the detail on this is really, really good. Now, I've got quite little hands and I can only just reach round with that, reach around that block. So I just want to show you another way 
of um, stamping and what I do is I put the card and again let's get all of that little one there onto the block put a piece of grid paper over the top and then just rub it over and then obviously you've got your image there so if your hands are little like mine that can be um, helpful to do it that way your other option is to hold it with both hands as you put it down or a stamparatus which is really cool because that means that you're lifting the plate up um, and that reminds me would would you like to see a bit more stamparatus stuff in the next few weeks I just thought I haven't I, I've been thinking about the things that we haven't looked at in a while um, and I know some of you have a Stamparatus, but some of you might have looked at it in the catalogue and, and not really known what it was. So let me know if you think that that would be something that you would be interested in. So, <clears throat> so we are back <laughs> to these lovely butterflies. I'm actually going to turn that over. So it's a bit easier to see. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go fresh. Oh, I don't know. I think I'm going to go fresh freesia, then pink. Oh, no. Here we go. I'm just deciding. So pink, lilac yeah okay oh there's so many yes pleases for stamparatus okay so what i will say is i do have lots of videos on my youtube channel for stamparatus um but what i will do is i will go over some of the basics and show you a few things with some new stamps um yeah, that'll be good. Oh, look. <laughs> There's like the whole screen I can see now is all stamparatuses. Right. Okay, what did I just decide now? I've got distracted and I put the piece of paper on the floor. <laughs> right, we're going Melon Mambo, Fresh Freezer and Gorgeous Grape. If I had a brain, it would be, well, I don't know. I don't know what it would be. Right. So I'm inking up my blending, blending brush and I'm going to start off the cardstock and I'm just going to go up. Kind of halfway, not quite. Well, yeah, maybe a little bit over halfway. Then I'm going to go into the fresh freezer and I'm going to kind of start in the middle and go up to the top. And then we're going to go with gorgeous grape over that very top section. Then I'm going to take the pink again and blend over those two areas because what you don't want is you don't want a harsh line. So I'm just going back into fresh freesia for that middle section. There we go. And 
a little bit more up here. There we go. Okay. So I seem to have come upstairs without acrylic blocks today. But I have a few spare. Right, so these colours, they're looking quite dark at the moment. Actually, on camera, they're looking really dark. But... Hmm. But they are not as dark as they look. So I'm just going to put this little tiny thank you just there. Cover this over and saying the blending brushes are fab and so easy to use. They are and it's it's such an easy thing to be able to get a great result. That's the thing for me. Um, sponge daubers and brayers are more tricky to use. One's going there. Ooh, that slipped. Didn't slip and slide, that just went, that just fell off the edge. Right, so I am just going to edge this paper so this is actually going on the inside and i often stamp but sometimes i decorate it in other ways and i just think that that just gives a really nice finish on the card let's just pop that down and it kind of mirrors what's on the other on the front as well so let me just move that out of the way. So there we go. So there is a really quick card. Let me just see. I'm hoping that the it's showing quite dark on my camera. It isn't that dark in real life, but it's really pretty. So I'm going to pop that to one side and I'll what I'll do is I'll bring it back at the end and you'll be able to see it will probably dry a little bit more by then. Um, so that's kind of a really quite a clean and simple card. And then I thought, well, OK, what else can I can I do? And I thought, well, I haven't done anything vintagey either for a while. So. I picked up this stamp set and I'm just panicking now. I'm just wondering whether actually it's still in the catalogue. <gasps> yes, it is. <laughs> hurrah. Hurrah, hurrah. I'm usually really good. Whenever anything's retired, I take it out of my, off my shelf. But I love this stamp because I love the text on it and it's just really good for making backgrounds so for this card I've got some very vanilla and crumb cake and early espresso And I've got some crumb cake ink and lots of butterflies. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 
do some stamping and some layering with this. I want to start out with this text text stamp and I'm going to stamp it off twice. So not just once, twice and then stamp it here. So I'll bring it up so you can just see but it's really really faint and that's one of the best way one of the best things to do when you are putting in a vintagey style you're going to collage things so you're going to put stamps on top of stamps on top of stamps and it it just makes a great card um you just keep going <laughs> with it and you just keep putting more and more stuff on it so i'm going to put the butterflies on next i may yet go back with some more text but we'll see and again i want the butterflies to be really pale so i'm going to stamp them off twice and i want that one there we go so can you see now it's it is there but kind of not there <laughs> oh dear right so now I'm going to get these leaves. Just take that text stamp off. And again. Oop. I'm going to stamp it off twice. And then I'm going to bring some leaves coming down this side. And coming up this side as well. And actually, I'm going to put those being a bit darker and also there as well. OK, so we've got little bits and little bits and it's it's building. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my blending brush. Ink it up and then come off the edge and I'm just going to bring it around all the edges of the card so hopefully you'll be able to see now i find it easier to move the card around and just come in from the edges all the way you can do splats um you can do splats with uh water droplets you can also um flick a paintbrush that works really really well um you know sometimes i don't know whether that's actually going to pick up so I'm actually got little tiny drops of water. Let me just grab a tissue and I will lift up that colour. And basically, because the ink is water based, where the droplets are, it will lift up the ink. Can you see those? I don't know how easy that is going to be able to see. Okay. Right, so I'm going to put a little bit more So I've got my always thinking of you stamp.
which is going to go just above this butterfly because I am actually going to put in the detailed butterfly in a moment. And then I'm just going to put a bit more of the text over in this corner. Stamp it off. Stamp it off. There we go. So I actually design, <laughs> designed this card around that single butterfly down there. Can you see that one? So that I could put this on here and, and 3D it. Now, at the moment, it is really quite different to this. So this is obviously very vintagey, and that's really quite clean. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go over it with, with my blending brush to soften that down. And then I'm going to scrumple it up. And <laughs> I'm just waiting to see if anyone's going to get cross at me. <laughs> Who likes scrumpling bits of cardstock? Who likes doing this? Distressing your card. This is a great way of getting movement into your card um, by you're breaking the fibers basically in the cardstock. There's a few shocked faces coming up. So that instantly gives a really pretty effect. So I think <laughs> she's never tried. Oh no, Deborah's got a sad face. Why are you sad, Deborah? Why are you sad? Don't be sad. Um, right, I'm just going to get some little gems as well. Because I was going to colour this, but I'm not going to now. I'll do a different card in a second. Yeah. I just love the tone on tone effect of this. So let's just get this done. Joanne said she's not made that this type of card for a while. This is honestly, you will you will have seen that most of my cards are clean and simple cards. Um, but this is actually one of my favourite types of cards to make. I love vintagey scrumply cards never tried scrunching well let me tell you Val you once you start <laughs> once you start it it you will love it and if you keep working on the cardstock eventually it will just pull apart and that looks really cool as well so let's just stick this all together Debbie's saying that she loves this one because it's so subtle. Yeah, it is. People think that sort of distressing and things is really difficult and and it's not. But you do have to you have to know when to stop because <laughs> sometimes sometimes you can go and you can put way too much on there. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do, we've got about another five minutes. 
what I'm actually going to do is um, just do another another one of these, but actually do it with the color, um, just to just to show you what was in my head <laughs> when I was designing. So let's go back to all the things that I was I, I did originally. So right, so this time what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to work slightly differently because I want a different butterfly because I can't use the same one because I've only got one of each die cut. So we'll do, we did the butterfly, we did the text, we did the leaves. Hi Jane! Lovely to see you, my dear. How are you doing? There we go. Um, let's do some sponging, blending brushes around the edges. What else did I do? <laughs> trying to replicate a card it's sometimes it's easy to remember what you did and other times it isn't so oh there were some big splats there and if you're wondering how i'm doing this i'm sticking my fingers like that in the water and splatting them onto the card Okay, so, right, I will wait to do the sentiment till that's dried a bit more. Actually, right, so, that is that butterfly. So, again, I'm going over with the blending brush and the crumb cake ink, so it's still soft and subtle. And then I've got my blends. So I've got pumpkin pie. And what my plan was, was just to give this a little hint of a colour. So not... not really dark tones but just enough hints of tones to kind of kind of lift it from sepia which is what the other one is really without without it being too bright Let's just try. That's, yeah, that's quite a bright yellow. That's Mango Melody. I'm going to have to soften that down in a minute. It's quite bright. Asian that light pumpkin. All right, so I'm just kind of going over a little bit with the light pumpkin. 
just to soften that mango a bit. So it is a, it's not, it's really not a bright colour. And you can kind of see when it's it's on there it will lift so let me i'm worried about that being too wet for me to stamp on actually i might be able to get it in the gap where there isn't any water let's try yeah so again i'm going to scrumple this and all i'm doing is holding it between my thumb and my first finger and wiggling it backwards and forwards you don't want to do it too much so that it actually tears um but you just keep bending it backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and what happens is the paper strands the fibers start to break down and instead of feeling like paper it starts to feel like fabric it's really cool and then you just screw it up It just gives so much texture. I love it. Right. So then that one is going over there. Pin that down. Where are my little gems? And these are the genial gems. Um and they're kind of they've kind of got golden tones in them i think i might put five on this one um they're just really cool really really cool now i can't layer that with crumb cake which i would normally do because i didn't bring a second piece upstairs but what i will do um when I get this on my, when I put this on my blog and I'll put pictures up later, um, what I will do is I will check and see which colour it needs to go on. Because it could be that the Cajun craze or the pumpkin or the mango melody will work better. If I move all of that out of the way, so let me just show you those two. So they're very similar, but not the same. So if I <laughs> if I cover that over like that, so you can kind of see. So that's one, and that's the other one. So let's put those there, and then <laughs> talk about contrast so completely different this very first card that we did so completely different um so i will play around with this and i will put the additional samples up i'm just going to get a wet wipe and get some of this ink off my fingers because this is i'm covered in ink now I will try and get it off before craft along, but I've got more crafting to do this afternoon. So chances are <laughs> I'll be even more inky by then. So I hope you have enjoyed today's craft and chat. I will be back here um, on Facebook until I, I make a decision. <laughs> 
<laughs> about um, what we're actually going to be doing. And um, I'll be back here next Tuesday at two. I will rearrange things around. Since you were all so excited about the Stamparatus, I will bring my Stamparatus and I'll go through a few hints and tips and things with you um, next week. So that's what we'll do next week. Tonight is Craft Along at seven o'clock, as I said, regardless of what happens to the football. And uh, I will look forward to seeing you all very, very soon. All of the products that you've seen today can be purchased in my online store if you pop over to www.inspiringinkin.com. You'll find a shop now button. You'll find links to all of the products um, that I've used both here on Facebook and on the replay on YouTube. So until I see you again, take care and thank you so much for joining me today. Goodbye.